Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Sure, I'll be having a great day today as we jump into a match on Sulphur Springs. Today, spawning on the southern side, a commander that goes by the name of Evolved Monkey. 39 true skill, going to be representing the red team in a bit of a backline position here, going for a vehicle bay. I love to see it. Evolved Monkey, a player we've seen a whole lot of. One of the best of all times, for sure. One of those players that you just hate to be on the opposing side of. But maybe our blue team leader is going to be up to the challenge here. A blue team commander that goes by the name of Florio. Cortex commander here, spawning on the north eastern side, or well, sorry, no, the northwestern side. Did I say west for the red commander? Anyways, Sulphur Springs is a bit of a weird one, right? Because it's left-hand side versus south-hand side? Yeah, a little weird. <laughs> Uh, don't fill up the comment section letting me know about your southern hand. Anyway, Florio, gonna be going for a vehicle bay here on the front line position over here. This is a bit of a complicated one because the lines on this one are a bit odd. You essentially have to fight in these big arcs like this. You're kind of fighting around over here, and it does mean that as you, as you approach this southwest corner, the lines get much shorter, right? So this is actually a lanes map, but it's much, much longer depending on where you spawn and what position you actually decide to fill here. So roughly, I've laid out exactly the lanes that people are going to be fighting across. I guess no better name might be fighting more like this rather than up into that chokehold. It does leave this area open to aggression, though, so maybe we'll see some units moving through there. Uh, vehicle starts for just about everybody, and that makes a lot of sense because there's all this water around over here, and vehicles are going to have no trouble crossing that, but some of the lighter units, like the Tick, for instance, are not going to be able to trespass that. So vehicles make a whole lot of sense. You're going to be able to get those rovers across. You're going to have a uh, much easier time moving your blitzes across as well. There we go. We see a couple of those rascals being pumped out, sent across. Seal all hatches and flaps as they dive under the water. Popping up on the other side and going to be heading across the map to do a little bit of scouting here. We do also have some grunts already across the map here from Clean Sea, our Cyan player. Love to see it. Hopefully those grunts can get across the map and do a little bit of damage here. Transport was shared to Evolve Monkey. Love to see that. You know I've been appreciating the uh, transport shenanigans as of late here. Going for some uh, early 1v1 build orders. Definitely bit me in the rear on the last stream we did. Go check that out if you're interested. That was uh, certainly an interesting game. We actually have a lot of interesting games. I do upload those streams. They're automatically recorded and uploaded to the uh, archives, quote unquote. You're more than welcome to go check those out if you haven't already. Or you're welcome to tune in live on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Discord is also down in the description where I make an announcement over there or the official Beyond All Reason Discord. All of that in the description, as I'm sure you're well aware. The YouTube standard format. Anyway, Kaiser Dick going to be moving down here on the southern side. The uh, Maroon Commander here. Going to discover that there is already an opponent out and on the map right now. Would love to see these grunts moving across a little bit more aggressively. I think if they took a couple steps forward, they would realize there's actually an opportunity here to get quite a bit of damage. All of this is traversable, right? You can run around over here. So seeing these grunts move around on this side, seeing these grunts move around on this side, sniping metal extractors, sniping wind turbines and metal extractors in the back line here certainly would be a great option for the Cyan commander here. Of course, a lot harder to make that decision with imperfect map vision like uh, these commanders have and unlike what we have, but always good to keep aware of exactly what you're up against. Blitz does kill the grunt on the southern side here, so that's quite nice as well. Looks like we do have a little bit of a Mexican standoff over here as some rascals find a couple of ticks over here, both of them staring at each other, wondering who's going to make the next move. Stannis' commander, though, will be more than enough to lock down this sector and secure it firmly. Phil RS5. Uh, going to be the uh, yellow commander here on the south eastern side the uh the, the northern side of this map is where the yellow commander will be fighting against but they'll be going up against florio so that's going to be a tricky battle right here yellow commander fighting for this section of the map and the blue commander fighting for that section as well evolved monkey getting ready to move forward here it looks like evolved monkey is going to take a front line right here okay interesting i haven't played this map all too often this is one of those uncommon maps we don't see it all the time on the ladder made me certainly interested to check out what's going on over here Xeno Dragon transporting the commander around. Going to try and claim some of these metal extractors over here. This is a big navy lane. Sometimes we even see two players on this lane. A uh, backline player over here and then a frontline navy player. Viable, but tricky. Instead, though, it's going to be Clownbaz, who's going for some of those air shenanigans here. Going to be going for uh, a little bit of fighter aggression. Maybe we'll see some shuriken as well. Shuriken, very powerful on navy, by the way. It's one of those engagements that's a little bit less... Well, uh, well documented, but yeah, the the shuriken can paralyze those naval units and make it a really efficient fight. And because of how snowbally naval is, it can be really easy to turn the tides of a battle just by paralyzing one, two, three frigates, and eventually it swings the favor of the battle in your favor. Boy, that was a sentence, huh? A couple of grunts getting engaged in a little bit of a lasered flash dance, disco mob. 
Yeah, there they go. Running into those blitzes, though, is going to hurt. Those blitzes, twin gauss cannons, going to project quite a bit of lethal force towards those poor, unfortunate Cortex souls. Down they go as the missile trucks continue firing away as well. Cortex, or, uh, well, Cortex missile trucks, but also Armada missile trucks. Very dangerous against these T1 units. Yeah, there we go. You can see they do shred off quite a bit of health right there. I'm trying to get an accurate measure here, but don't quite have the line of sight, it would appear. Somebody hit that guy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Janus missile definitely gonna hurt enough. But those, those uh, whistlers or lashers, whichever one you happen to have, Cortex or Armada, very good stuff. Kaiser over here, the Maroon Commander has managed to claim, well, not quite yet claim the Metal Extractor spot, but is at the very least fortifying it, so potentially we'll see that Metal Extractor going up soon. Not bad whatsoever. It's a 3.2 Metal Extractor. Very valuable relative to these regular 1.8s. There's another 3.2 up here as well that's going to be claimed by a construction vehicle. Very good to see. Yeah, the Maroon Commander definitely putting it all out on the field here. Keeping, keeping it all very uh, very well invested in units all across the board right now. No metal in the bank either. That's what we like to see. Energy converters are up as well, converting some of that excess energy. Very, very nicely done. Pink Commander expanding forward right here. I wonder why we're not claiming this metal extractor. Maybe a little bit of a miscue right there, but either way, Xeno Dragon does have a very far forward... Oh, Naval Lab up here. Okay, interesting. Saw the little dot on the map, but I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. Xeno Dragon has gone for a forward naval bay on the front lines right here. It's going to close the distance to get engaged against the uh, opponent here, Hebe. It actually helps a lot because it does allow you to keep control of a whole lot more metal extractors than your opponent does over here. Yeah, that could be quite powerful. Two versus one on this northern sector. There's another big battle going on down south here as well. Looks like the red and uh, pink forces from Omaha here are going to be working together. Those whoa, Janus is firing away their twin missile sets. Meanwhile, multiple units being microed around over here, though. It's pawns versus grunts, which is always tricky, because if those grunts are just fight commanded forward and the pawns are AFK, they can be blasted away completely efficiently. That's one of the reasons why I love playing Legion. You can finally get back at those Cortex commanders for fight commanding and eviscerating your army while you're not looking. Only a problem, I suppose, for us uh, low APM players. <laughs> uh, let's see. Evolved Monkey still porking up over here. That's a lot of static defense. Two or three aggravators is going to shut that down quite nicely, so... Would like to see maybe some of these rocket pots pushing over in this direction. Evolved Monkey calling for help as we are overloaded. It's good team coordination right there, trying to keep the team well aware of exactly what's going on. Kaiser Dick's commander looking a little bit damaged. 37% down to 32. Those rocketeers, they do not mess around firing their little slow-moving rockets. It would be an engineering marvel to create a rocket that traveled that slowly. It would almost be more impressive than a regular rocket. Well, yeah, every volley that connects, though, from those aggravators does hurt. Their little twin rocket packs are devastating to the commander's health. Not very uncommon that we see a uh, commander going down to a bunch of rocketeers kiting away with it. Medium tank, meanwhile, has ravaged a whole bunch of metal extractors. Talk about value. Four kills in this medium tank right here, and it's about to be five and six. Two more metal extractors going down right there. Very nicely done by Stannis. Getting some excellent value out of one of those medium tanks right there. Just peeling it off from the front lines and sending it on a little bit of a run by. It doesn't take a whole lot, but it's enough in order to, yeah, throw a little bit of a disruption into Snotgun's main, uh, main economy here. Love the name, Snotgun. That's a beautiful name. Shell Shockers over here are going to be more than enough to throw off the defenses of Florio, who was forced back at this point. And going to be, yeah, forced into a little bit of a retreat here. Energy stalling because we're going for a Geo here. That Geo comes up and it'll solve the energy problems. But for the time being, you're pretty much out of energy always whenever you're going for a Geothermal. There's basically no way around it. Not in the early game anyways. Yeah, Missile Trucks denying the Shuriken from going in here. You need a critical mass of Shuriken to paralyze all the Missile Trucks before you jump on top of all this. It's very tricky and it's difficult to know whether you've got the right amount of units or not. It's a, uh, it's a tough call to make. I think probably with nine shurikens, you'd be able to pull it off, but it would take, uh, or you would take, heavy losses, that is. Heavy casualties on the front lines. Shurikens moving around in different directions here, trying to find a good angle to come in from. There's anti-air all over the place here. Talk about a fortified zone. We've got twin guards coming up here, even those T1 medium laser towers, those uh, twin light towers. Quite good against big spams of units, but also quite good against singular heavy targets. They're definitely a very good all-around unit. 
Rocketeer is stepping forward and falling back right here, trying to get engaged in this uh, little static defense pocket that Evolved Monkey has carved out right here. Tricky, though. You don't want to overstep and then lose too many of your aggravators. Definitely a risky business. Thugs are actually under production right now. We're just going to go for that more uh, advanced, heavier army composition. Don't mind that whatsoever. Forward vehicle bay for Stannis, by the way. Medium tanks and incisors. Pull the trigger. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a tricky battle. You have to dip them in and then pull them out just before you uh, take too much damage. You don't want to lose any of these units. You just want to scare your opponent back a little bit. Evolved Monkey shared some shurikens over here. Very nice. One area where those shurikens could get tremendous value is up here in the northern sector. Florio has no anti air. The commander could throw up anti air pretty quickly here, but if those shurikens jump on top of all this, I think we could see a devastating trade right here in favor of the tan commander. Massive force right here for Bar... Bar a neck Barzi. Okay. <laughs> that name's clearly a reference to something, but I just don't get it. Xeno Dragon continuing to fight the good fight over on the high seas here as well. Man, this map is excellent. Action across the board here. What an even split. Usually what we see is somebody wins the southern side and sweeps across, or somebody wins the naval side and sweeps across from the, the northern or southern side. Rare that we get such an evenly balanced game like this. We do have Shell Shockers now ob obliterating Omaha's base over here, trying to fire away at a lot of these units. Yeah, Omaha trying to degun down some of those Janices. Ooh, he catches one of them. Another one will fire a second volley, though. Oh, well, half of a second volley. Yeah, there we go. Every hit from those Janices really stings that commander, and boom goes the pink commander right there, taking out the lab as well. Mouser are now out on the field here for a Vault Monkey. They're going to be great against a lot of this T1 chaff, but is it going to be enough? We only have three of them out so far. Well, yeah, doing some serious work. You can see just how badly scuffed up all those units are. A lot of them on low health now. The problem is these Janus are encroaching, and you can't retreat with the Mauser. Retreating with Mauser essentially nullifies them. Oh, Evolved Monkey. Ready to let us know. Yep, keep going. No, no, no. Let everybody know that you'd like to ping them. To be fair, this is a dangerous front line, but my goodness. Have we pinged enough yet, Evolved Monkey? Thank you. Goes to show. 39 true skill. Still not prone to uh, overcompensating for the amount of value or the amount of data that he's feeding back to his team. Maybe that's it. Maybe not seeing a whole lot of pings from his own team and deciding maybe it's... Uh, Maybe, maybe we need to compensate for the lack of things on everyone else's behalf. Either way, it's about time we see some retaliation here. We do have a whole bunch of medium tanks moving through right now. This is a massive run by, and there's nothing in the world to stop this. We went up to T2 metal extractors right here for the tan commander. I don't think Stannis has any idea what's about to hit him on the front lines here. In the back lines, actually. Yeah, he sees all these dots moving forward right here. We can also see all these dots over here. This is the view for the... Uh, red team, by the way. Commander goes down over here, by the way. Overwhelmed by the purple commander. Very nicely done. Yeah, immediately a response. When you see the uh, beamer turrets, immediately maybe an overstatement there. Evolved Monkey trying to carve apart as much as this is possible. Uh, does actually manage to keep the commander alive. That's impressive. Just 4% HP on that commander. These medium tanks do make it into the back. You know what? Lightning tanks and bulls are here, though, to clean it all up. And all said and done, actually a really nice deflection. We had to give up this section over here. We lost a ton of ground on the front line, but we didn't lose the entire back line. The economy lives right here, and that is crucial for Stannis, who does have one of the last remaining forward outposts over here. Rapidly losing them to the ball of medium tanks that's ever growing over here. It looks like the commander, by the way, for Florio. Pardon me, did go down. Stannis, moving forward for the D-Gun. Trying to cloak and move and D-Gun all at the same time here. Very energy intensive. We need to get this T2 constructor back up and running. Get this, upgrading these metal extractors, moving around, claiming all this. Clean Sea, meanwhile, has also pushed forward on the southern side. Maroon ground is losing. Yeah, Kaiser forced to retreat the Shell Shocker. Similarly to the Mauser, the Shell Shocker become ineffective on the retreat. Medium tanks, very efficient against T1 bots. However, more stuff beats less stuff. As the age-old motto goes. And indeed, just like that. A whole bunch of these, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of these thugs managed to continue pushing back the Maroon Commander. We do have a T2 economy, so at the very least we're able to pump out a whole lot of these medium tanks. 
the reclaim though from Clean Sea has just been phenomenal. Yeah, you can see absolutely picked dry. Everything over here has been eaten up and absorbed. It does mean that the uh, yeah Cyan Commander can just afford to continue fielding an army over here. And if Kaiser Dick is retreating, there's nothing we're going to be able to do over here. Yeah. What a bummer. Would love to see resbots here. I think a couple of resbots to pick up a lot of these units and fold them back into the composition wouldn't be the end of the world. We could also see a T2 transition at this point. We've pushed so far forward here. We don't even really need to kill the uh, Maroon Commander here. We just need to push far enough to fund a T2 transition. Stannis has lost all the Shell Shockers here. Medium tanks in mass over here. I love that we've just gone for medium tanks. We haven't gone for Shell Shockers. We haven't gone for Pounders. We haven't diversified the uh, composition here in virtually any sense. Just pure brute. And I feel like that's very Cortex in nature, isn't it? Wow, what a sturdy static defense. The uh, ferret pop-up anti-air defense. Damn near impervious when it's tucked away in its little dome. Ooh, 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 gotta be careful about- Oh, accidentally D-guns down his own lab. Oh, no. That hurts for Stannis right here. Why haven't we gotten these T2 metal extractors up and running? Oh, no. Yeah, we can, we can certainly see the slippage. Stannis is starting to lose it here on the front lines. Commander is going to be going down shortly here. Medium tanks pushing on the right-hand side as well. Tan Commander in a whole lot of trouble. Uh, does get some killer D-guns before he goes down. Medium tanks still pushing forward, though. Yeah, they're going to jump on top of that Geothermal over here, blasting it to smithereens. Geothermal goes down, cuts off a significant portion of the power infrastructure right here for the Yellow Commander, who is desperately relying on it to build this fusion reactor. Luckily, for the time being, the wind is looking phenomenal, but at least losing that 300 energy per second definitely stings a little bit. Hounds are out and Shuriken are coming to the rescue as well. Shuriken definitely can save the day here. Nullifying a lot of these medium tanks. That uh, Hounds will clean this up comes with a little asterisk attached though, right? You, they will clean this up, but only after the medium tanks hit the back line and start doing a whole bunch of damage here. So it's a little bit of a, little bit of a trade off, I guess you could say. The Shurikens did allow for these medium tanks to be split into two groups though. So it shuts down a little bit of their snowbally power here. Hounds should not be this close, though. We should definitely move the Hounds out of the firing range of these medium tanks here. Maybe using the Hounds as a little bit of a bodyguard, though, for the squishier economy. Not a bad idea. Guess I don't mind that all too much here, but more and more medium tanks rolling through. If we don't shut down this medium tank push right here, this is just going to continue being devastating. Yeah, the medium tanks having no trouble ravag ravaging the base right here of Stannis after pushing all the way through over here. A lot of this metal wasn't reclaimed, which is a bit surprising. Would expect a uh, resbot or something to move on over there. Air switch from Florio. Interesting. Going for some bombers here, trying to clean up the game. Trying to find a way to shut it all down. Meanwhile, Evolve Monkey going for a killer economy. We're going for advanced geos up on the front lines here, so that explains why we're going so heavily into uh, advanced energy converters in the back line. I suppose it makes sense. Those advanced geos can definitely contribute quite a lot of power. Little literal raw energy to one team or another. Clean Sea has not gone for T2 yet. Interesting. We definitely have enough energy to start worrying about energy converters. We have uh, a couple of them up on the field here. Only four, so we're going to be getting an extra four metal per second. Not bad, mind you, but definitely could see a little bit more. So many bulls out from Wiggy, though, in the back line. Just nonstop bull production. And the thing about those bulls is they're so sturdy that once they're out in the field, they really are hard to put down, especially with T1. I would like a mixed composition, though. A couple of lightning tanks mixed in and maybe some uh, Mauser as well wouldn't do too poorly for, uh, the, well, the red or the orange commander, both of which going very heavily into the bull production. You gotta remember, those bulls are almost a thousand metal apiece. 950 metal, 13,000 energy. Extremely, extremely costly. Stock gun and no better name are actually in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, no, no, no. Pull the trigger. Go kill those commanders. They're completely unsupported. Yeah, commanders completely unsupported here on the front lines. The bulls absolutely could kill those commanders. I suppose you can't see the health bar of the commander, so it's difficult to tell. But absolutely, without any kind of support whatsoever. We have a couple of Sheldon coming out here, but that's definitely not going to be enough. Oh, yeah, you don't want to get your bull's D-gun. That definitely hurts. There we go. One of the commanders goes down. We have a lot of gunslingers out here. That's a bit interesting. I feel like uh, gunslingers versus D2 vehicles not going to work out all too well. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, but I don't believe so. thing is, the Gunslingers are best if you can get them into combat, get them real low on HP, and then pull them back. The thing about T2 is it effectively all has enough range to kill whatever it's actually engaging with. If you're, if you're gonna get into a battle with T2, you're effectively gonna lose units. 
fighter wave sent across. Well, scouting wave, actually. No fighters included. At the very least, not anymore. Bombers coming in to ravage the economy right here for the Maroon Commander. Gonna drop their Cortex payload right on top of all those wind turbines. Ah, the advanced solars remain intact, though. Yeah, actually, with those advanced solars remaining intact, this is not the end of the world. Oh, some emergency flak trucks are produced as well. Beautifully done right there by the Red Commander. Remembering one of the most valuable units that can come out of that vehicle bay. The flak truck here. Not gonna matter much over here, though. <laughs> Killer heavy bombing run. Does take out those advanced geos over there, shutting down a tremendous portion of the energy economy. Looks like Evolve Monkey didn't transition into a more stable energy economy, like fusions or advanced fusions. Uh, with the energy from those geothermals, so that's going to be a pain to try and reclaim. Yeah, immediately starts rebuilding those advanced geos over here, but the commander is lost. It'll take quite a while before those advanced geos come back up and running again. It takes a whole lot of build power in order to get those back up and running, so I wouldn't be surprised if it would, at the very least, be a good long while before we actually see anything rebuilt on that island. Meanwhile, heavy tanks now pushed into the lines over here. Bull's going to have a much, or uh, sorry, not Bull's, Hound's going to have a much harder time dealing with the heavy Cortex tanks than the medium ones. And doing a decent enough job, though. Shuriken here to help. Definitely a lot better. There we go. Paralyzing a lot of those heavy tanks and nullifying their effect. Very nicely done. Bull's coming to the rescue here as well, and I think with the help of those Shuriken, this will be cleaned up quite nicely. Ultimately minimizing damage over here on the right-hand side. So, what have we gained over here? Well, we've gained the advantage of these three metal extractors as well as these four over here. We haven't gained this metal extractor or these two over here, but I think that's fair. For now, I think bar a neck, bar crazy. No, bar a neck, barzy. Has a certain advantage uh, as far as the, as far as position goes. I don't think, however, that they're necessarily capitalizing on this the best way that they could. I think maybe going for some stricter economy in the back line would be the worst idea. Yeah, using these constructors to build some build power back here and then going into an APHIS and maybe some energy converters here. You already have the metal and you already have the units. You might as well just exacerbate that economic difference here as well. Sharpshooter is now pushing forward. We're going for a sharpshooter gunslinger composition, which is pretty interesting. Usually what I prefer are sharpshooters and welders just because the welders can deal with things like, for instance, the tick span here. Ah, uh, yeah, the tick's not going to be able to cross... Oh, maybe they can't cross the water. Oh, okay. It is actually shallow enough that the ticks can cross the water right there. I didn't even know that. It does make those ticks quite viable as a spam option here. Ah, no anti or whatsoever. Again, the shuriken coming out to play. Shouldn't say whatsoever. The jaguar does technically have a miniature anti-air missile strapped onto the back of its little carriage. Certainly capable of uh, doing something. we go. Tick spam nullifying all this, though. Forcing two commanders back just with the humble power of the tick. If you didn't believe in it before, maybe you believe in it now. Heavy bombers coming out here. Trying to target down all these hounds over here. It's actually a really nice play. Those hounds are quite susceptible to bombing. Not the fastest moving unit. And yeah, there we go. Those heavy bombers can down them quite quickly. Very nicely done by one of the air players here. The Seafoam Green air player. This is why I prefer the welders, though. Gunslingers have had a much harder time against these ticks than the welders would have. Welders essentially having aim lock. Aim hacks. Oh, this is a really nice catch by the Cyan Commander. Clean Seed jumps on top of the Mauser on the southern side with a whole bunch of fiends. That is really nicely done. Very nice play. Yeah, these lightning tanks were out of position right there. And so, unfortunately, for Kaiser, loses the entire composition to just a couple of those cheap T2... Uh, assault units here, the Fiend. We all know just how powerful those things are. Still epic to see it in action, though. Sure, get paralyzing this entire force, but there's no units to capitalize on this. Oh, no. Ah, it's a band-aid on a much larger problem. Yeah, all the Shuriken are shot out of the sky at this point. That really burns. We need some units here to try and actually deal with this. We are pumping out at this point a whole bunch of Mauser to try and fire away at all these. Which is quite nice to see. I think Mauser could do well if they were in a big enough ball here. Certainly could deal with the Sheldon. Whoa, big runaway hound attack over here. Bombers trying to clean all this up, but for the time being, those hounds are shutting down a whole bunch of these metal extractors, which is quite nice. We're gonna need some killer splitties.
I think the heavy bombers are going to be more than enough to clean all this up, but it is a little bit jank. Not that that's anything abnormal for us around here. It's just that the bombers, when they're left to target on their own, can be a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult. They can, they can sometimes do unpredictable things. They might friendly fire their own units, for instance. Well, eventually damage was minimized there. I think actually that was acceptable losses for the Powder Blue Commander. Considering how far those hounds pushed, I think that was well worth it. Big push over here, though. Counter-bombing attack with the blue player sending Florio, sending forward all of his fighters, all of his bombers, trying to take out whatever he can. Does manage to pop an advanced Geo over here, as well as a lot of the economy over here for the Tan player Stannis. Bombers coming back around, trying to take out the build power for the yellow commander here as well, and they do get it. Oh, this is starting to hurt pretty badly. Yeah, we need multiple people up in the air is what I'm seeing here. Right now, just the one player in air is uh, going to be Clambas. We don't have any other air players as it stands for the time being. We have two air players right now for the uh, blue team. Meanwhile, naval battle has been won. Just wanted to highlight that really quickly before jumping back down south here to take a look at these Sheldon. They are under fire from the Mauser over here. Yeah, I think we have enough Mauser to actually push this back. Sheldon are falling one by one as the Mauser continue firing. Tex also gumming up the gears of this Cortex engine here. Not on their own very powerful, but in a massive swarm, the Tech can certainly do quite a bit of damage. The Fiend's certainly an excellent option against the Tech. Fast enough to keep up with the, the, the pace of the tick, but also does enough AoE damage to actually manage to kill a lot of the ticks. Love a self-destruct right here to make these fiends blow up the build power here. I guess not going to be necessary, though. Yeah, they get to the back line and take down all the energy converters for the red commander. Not that those energy converters are very useful, because as you can see, only a couple of them are active right now. It's because those geothermals were lost up on the front lines here, but that really does hurt. T3 transition, meanwhile, has occurred on the southern side. The yellow commander lost his entire base over here, but it's not to worry because he does have the support of a T3 commander and is back here. Clombat's moving into position over on this right-hand side. Love to see that. Heavy tank's going to be moving over in that direction here as the Marauder are already out on the field. Do we have a T3 transition yet? We do indeed. Okay, T3 lab just about finished right here for the blue commander, who is going into his first fusion reactor, actually. I guess it's not the end of the world with the geothermals out on the map, but it does still feel pretty late for a... Uh, fusion reactor. Clombass cloaks the commander and moves it into position here. Oh, this could be killer. The D-guns have to be just about damn near perfect. Beautiful D-gun. First one. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. Oh, okay. Well, we took down the majority of them, and you know what? Oh, there's an advanced exploiter over here. Okay. I was I was hesitant to say that was good enough here, but with the ex advanced exploiter, I think this is probably going to be fine. That, accompanied with the shurikens here, will shut down this push. Cost the commander, but I think eventually the price that was paid is much worse than what he stood to lose. Uh, yeah, southern side. Still feeling the burn from these fiends. Pun well intended. Self-destruct would not be ill-issued here. Surprised we haven't pushed into this section at all either. This is all just T1. T2 could certainly shut that down. Single rover gets into the back line over there. Quite nice. Sharpshooter wasting a lot of their shots on the ticks over here. Gunslinger have the tiniest bit of AoE on their attack here as well, I do believe anyways. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that actually, I don't see an AoE indicator. Otherwise it's just extremely tiny. Just about anything can AoE ticks though, just because they can cram so many of them into such a small space. Torpedo bombers coming out here. Uh, yeah, okay, there is some flak over here, so at the very least the torpedo bombers are going to have to be a little conscientious about going over the water here. This is not the way to torpedo bomb, by the way. You can see what's happening is we're actually targeting the ground underneath the laboratory. What you have to do is fly the torpedo bombers over and then fight command them to get them to drop their bombs and then move them back. Yeah, this is not, uh, we're not actually hitting anything. <laughs> Learning opportunity, I suppose, right here for Hakazai, but also anybody else who's torpedo bombing. Yeah, you have to move them in and then fight command, otherwise they're uh, not actually going to bomb anything. There we go. We do manage to actually hit the lab with that volley, but we lose all the torpedo bombers in the process over there. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Just one of those game mechanics you just have to get used to and learn how to play around. Anywho, Sheldon on the southern side, continuing to ravage his base over here. Eventually, the Red Mauser were not enough to push all of it back. They did a good job. They did their very best, but it was not enough. 
Lightning tanks here are going to be a much better option, though. Yeah, there we go. Lightning tanks jumping on top of the Sheldon. Blasting apart as many of them as they can. Shuriken also helping out a whole lot. Manticore on the back line, though, do contribute a lot of anti-air firepower. Eventually shooting all those Shuriken down, but it's well after all the Sheldon have already died here. Recoverable, certainly, for the Yellow Commander here, but that definitely burns just a little bit. Losing that many forces, uh, losing that entire front line right there definitely stings. Oh no, this was... Oh, I see. Yeah, this was the Red Commander's base. <laughs> I was so confused, because we have Yellow over here and we have Yellow over here. This was the Red Commander's base, who is now tapped out. Looks like Evolved Monkey has had enough. Evolved enough from this game as is and decided that, uh, yeah, this one is well and over. I don't think so quite yet. And I'm glad the yellow commander agrees because we're going to continue to see a fight right here on the front lines. Continuing to produce bulls where I really feel like the lightning tanks have been the most effective unit here. One of those difficult things to do when you're starting to get really good at bar. One of those things when you want to step up your gameplay is learning to read effective engagements. To try and figure out what worked, what didn't what tools in your toolkit actually effectively countered what your enemy was throwing at you. And for instance, right there, the lightning tanks absolutely dismantled everything that the green commander had on the front line. Uh, and yet we're still going into bulls right now, which feels a little bit weird. I suppose one justifier of that is that we do have a bunch of consoles running around eating up all the metal over here that was wasted. So at the very least, we're spending our metal, which is always a good thing, but definitely a little bit tricky. Marauder taking a sea-based approach over here on the northern side. They have lofty ambitions. You can see they plan to come up from the shoreline here and move all the way down south here, ravaging every base in the in-between. We'll see how far those plans go. And Xeno Dragon just continuing to build a massive naval fortification. Bomb the Aphis, says the uh, blue team leader Florio here. The bulls are out. Will they be enough? This is the problem with the Bulls versus the Fiends. They just can't quite hit those Fiends consistently. The AoE sort of makes up for it. Kind of, kind of makes up for it. But it also means that you're going to do a bunch of AoE uh, friendly fire damage. Not ideal, certainly. I think these Sheldon will be cleaned up. So I'm going to switch my attention over here to the Marauder. who made landfall and now find the exposed backsides here of the green team. Or, well, the blue team, sorry. There they go. Ten shurikens, definitely not going to be enough over here. As many pings as you want, those shurikens will not be enough to shut down the Marauder, who do have a little backpack anti-air missile. Shiva coming over in this direction, but the Marauder don't really care about the Shiva. They're too slow, too cumbersome. Marauder are just going to run on by. Boom goes the base for Florio, though. All the metal extractors, all the build power. T3 lab in a whole lot of trouble here. Not a, not a T3 unit will come out of that T3 lab anymore here. We're just uh, not, with, not with four construction turrets anyways. Wow, massive counterattack right here. These Marauder have absolutely devastated the back line. If there's one place you don't want Marauder to be, it's right in your back line. Certainly hurts quite a lot. Yep, that base is good and dead. Time to move on. Definitely don't want to clump up your Marauders either. Helps mitigate the uh, splash damage that those Sheldon do. Or not Sheldon, sorry, the Shiva do. Marauders still kicking though. How much more will these two be able to do? Well, not a tremendous economy over here, so not going to be able to pop all too much, but already shutting down the blue commander here on the northern side, shutting down the uh, green commander here, the Seafoam green commander. Definitely quite nice as well. Bombers going in for a bombing run over here. I think we're going to try and go after the Aphis. How many bombers do we have in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ought to be enough. Ooh, the bombers were leading the charge though, and so that long range anti here shoots down two of them. Oh no, I don't think we have enough bombers now. Yeah, four bombers, not going to be enough to take down those Aphises. Flak turrets also obliterating everything over here. Wow. Definitely prepared for an anti or a, uh, aerial attack over here, certainly. Anti-air is strong with this one. Xeno Dragon perfectly deflecting that attack right there. That was the last Hail Mary that the Seafoam Green Commander was going to throw. And with all those bombers down, there's no chance that uh, yeah, any, more, any more air support is going to be had here. 
We're gonna have to see an entirely new commander go into air if we want to, well, take back control of the air forces. A little bit of a change has been made, by the way, to the flagships here. I haven't covered it officially on the channel. We covered it in one of the live streams. They now fire in a big volley that is much more damaging per shot, but much slower, obviously. It's very interesting. I, I think I like the change. I think it makes those uh, flagships a little bit more useful. According to Ornit, they're a little bit better at punching through shields as well because each individual shot does more damage. I have no idea how shield uh, wear and tear is calculated, but I imagine it must uh, therefore be some sort of measure of how much damage the projectile does and how, uh, you know, directly into the shield it's going or something like that. Apparently there's a long and well thought out discussion about crying. Now is not the time for crying, it's the time for rebuilding. Get back in the game, Commander. Your team needs you. Resbot's trying to patch together a whole bunch of these uh, Marauder over here. I actually quite like that. I think Resbot's make a whole lot of sense right here. Try and recuperate as much as possible. Those Shiva have now hit the front lines. Took a good long while for them to get out here, but now that the Shiva are there, it's going to be really difficult for the blue team to hold without the proper units on the front. We're going to need these sharpshooters in position over here. They're sort of holding this sector over here that's been relatively uncontested. Yeah, looks like uh, red team unaware of the fact that there's actually a massive lane all the way through to the back line of the blue team right here. Relatively little to stop units from moving through in that direction. You can actually move units over in this direction as well, so that is a gaping weakness right there. The sharpshooters make it a little bit harder for the blue team to push in that direction, but of course they could also push down in this direction as well. You can tell everybody is definitely sweating in their seats here, trying to figure out what the right option is to push forward. Bulwarks have been set up over here. Usually if you're gonna go for static defense like this, it's so that you can go for a whole bunch of economy. Not the case right here for the Cyan Commander, though. He's just pumping out more and more units. Oh, actually, we do have a fusion reactor coming up. I spoke a little too soon there. Getting the economies up and running is really crucial here. Advanced Geo should definitely be coming up all over the place as well. We stopped getting this Advanced Geo here. It looks like the uh, Red Commander Evolved Monkey, the only one that really cared about it. Although I guess it is still within threat range of all these units over here. So that's a little bit dangerous. Shiva also going to be quite threatening there. Surprised we're not going for more Pulsars. Or, uh, Starlights, the movable Pulsar. Feels like it'd be well worth it. Capital ship now firing away. Yeah, it'll be able to fire at all this from long range. Firing that quad Cerberus cannon. This is a nice little hit to Florio. Remember, Florio's economy was devastated by those Marauder that pushed through in the back line. So this really, really hurts. That's a, about a third of the energy economy here. Yeah, we got about 1,000 energy coming in from the Fusion Reactor and another 1,250 from the other Advanced Geo over here. So losing that Advanced Geo definitely cuts down on the production capabilities right here for the Blue Commander. Gonna be a little bit tricky to get this back up and running. We do have Resbots running around trying to patch things back up, though. So that's quite nice to see. I'm surprised that with that Killer Marauder run, we didn't go for any kind of follow-up play here from anybody else on the team. <laughs> I guess the entire rest of the red team was so crippled that they felt that they didn't really have an option to push in here, but I feel like a little bit of aggression would have been the worst idea. Wouldn't mind seeing the Shiva handed over right now to Snotgun. I feel like if we just handed over the Shiva instead of worrying about microing them and microing the backline, this might actually end up working out. We do have a scout plane over here, by the way, from Xenodragon. That's quite nice. Actually scouting what's going on over here in the backline, allowing that uh, capital ship to fire away with its long-ranged heavy plasma weaponry. Massive bombing wave headed down south here. No anti-air set up right now for the Cyan Commander. The Lavender Commander starts pinging, but the anti-air player, or the uh, air player in general, rather, was eliminated a long time ago. Wow, what a carpet bombing. <laughs> what a carpet bombing, my goodness. Beautiful follow-up bombing run right there on the Aphis. There's still another Aphis over here as well. That is going to seal the deal right there as these bombers obliterate the base of the Cyan, Green, and Lavender player here. Not done yet either. They're going to continue heading into the back lines here. Going to drop some more bombs on a fusion reactor. Not bad. Advanced solar is going up in flames as well. That was a really beautiful push. Yeah. The all-in is triggered right now. Cyan forces will push forward. There's no follow-up forces to continue here. Shiva 
have also been pushing forward here. This is the all-in that the blue team needs. If they can manage to do enough game-winning damage here, they might be able to recover. Yeah, a whole bunch of those hornets are up in the sky. Blasting away at those uh, Shiva here. Doing about 2% per shot. Not bad. For some reason, I feel like I imagined the Hornet was a lot stronger than it actually is, or than it seems to be right here. Oh, single shot, though, takes down all the energy converters and the build power over here. That really stings. Enough Hornets were produced, I think, to eventually clean all this up. But man, does that burn. Losing all that build power like that is going to be really tricky to replace. Oh, oh, oh. Forgot a Shiva. Oh, no. Shiva was unkilled, and that does mean that suddenly the, uh, yeah, advanced Geo is going to pop over here as well. That really burns. Commander goes down. Hornet's too busy trying to take care of all these tanks, trying to save their fellow teammate over here, Clown Bass, who has taken a lot of damage. My goodness, what a push from the blue team. We do have bombers coming out now. From Xeno Dragon. There we go. Managed to take down the T2 lab. Wouldn't mind just seeing this area completely peppered with bombs. Yeah, it looks like we've just set a big area command. I think a better command right here might be the, uh, just hitting A to attack, and then right-click and drag to spread a bunch of these attack dots all over the place. Either way, though, those wind turbines are popping. Constructors are dying. We need to worry about the anti-air here. Hornets up in the sky are going to ravage all this, though. Yeah, this is definitely a good answer. Building those uh, heavier gunships right here are going to be great for dealing with a whole bunch of these heavier T2 units. See them blast down these gunslingers quite nicely here. Excellent answer right there from Wiggy. Managing to pump out just enough units before his base did go down in order to actually keep his team alive. There's a couple of mammoths over here. Another great option for those hornets to take down. Basically any big, strong, single target unit, hornets are going to excel against. They fire those, what are they called? Twin Sabo missiles or something? Yeah, armor-piercing Sabo missile launcher. There's a uh, bit of confusion about that because aside from pop-up turrets, and commanders, there's not really armor va armor values like you might see in something like, for instance, StarCraft II in this game. Armor piercing essentially just means it does a lot of damage. <laughs> Which is fair enough, I suppose, but it's just a funny, almost a misnomer. Nuclear bombers out now. Trying to obliterate whatever they can. And damn good at it too, I might add. There we go. Van Shio goes down, looks like the other nuclear bomber will be shut down before it managed to uh, deliver its thermonuclear payload onto the base over here, but still very nice. Shuts down a lot of the economy over here. What a back and forth match. Red team still with a tremendous economy advantage just because all these metal extractors here have been destroyed and have never been reclaimed. We have Marauder production coming out right now though, from Xeno Dragon though. Xeno definitely interested in trying to close this one out. Endgame solutions are definitely tricky to figure out. Marauders are one excellent option, but as soon as your opponent has enough static units or enough T3 units of their own, Marauder become relatively ineffective. Not the case here, though, because, of course, that T3 lab has been shut down multiple times right there from Florio. Means that it's going to be virtually impossible to shut down these Marauder that are coming forward here. Purple Commander calls the resign vote, in fact, realizing that with this economic disadvantage right here, about 41,000 energy versus 5,000 for the blue team. Yeah, losing those advanced geos definitely hurts here. Suddenly, the uh, economic disadvantage is too tremendous. Shiva continuing to try and push forward over here. The Hornets are sent, though. Oh, a nuke is up in the air even. Okay. That's pretty funny. Nuke is up in the air, and it does head straight on over towards the base of Snot Gun. It's going to receive the full brunt of a thermonuclear detonation right in the middle of main production. Beautiful, beautiful play right there by the Yellow Commander. Manages to get a nuke out and across the map. That is uh, pretty brutal. Now, as Florio pointed out, there's a single commander remaining. It's Xeno Dragon, and he's hiding over here on this island, cloaked but next to an advanced fusion reactor, so sort of undoing the effect there. <laughs> Obviously, one of those fusion reactors going up in smoke is going to take down the commander as long, alongside it, so... Yeah, not sure exactly how valuable that cloak is going to be. Appreciate the effort. Like, the thought is there, but just the execution's a little bit off. Massive Marauder Ball building over here. This Marauders could sweep through this entire production facility over on this side. Hebe could definitely lose 
quite a lot of units over here. What do we actually see as far as Xeno Dragon is concerned? Yeah, we know about this entire facility. Okay. Marauders should definitely walk over in this direction. There's a lot of Antier over here, but obviously Antier is not going to do much against a whole lot of Marauders coming around. Florio trying to rebuild over here as well, by the way, trying to get a whole bunch of an energy economy up and running. We have a bunch of res bots over here. I think they're you know, resurrecting a bunch of metal extractors and all sorts of other goodies like that as well. Big spam of units being sent across here. The Hornet certainly could save the day, though. Yeah, there they go. Horn is going to be dispatched to actually clean up some of these units. I don't mind it. I think putting them on a big patrol path or maybe even just a fight command over here in the middle of the map. Just trying to uh, keep all that out of your hair. There we go. Marauder is sent across. I think shutting down the spam factory is actually a little more important here. The spam over on this side, achieving basically nothing. When your spam is being countered 100% efficiently and you're not pushing into it using anti-spam weaponry or anti-pork uh, anti weaponry, anti-siege weaponry almost always worth it to reconsider your spam Marauder take down the big res ball bot res bot ball <laughs> and a nuke does manage to connect with the middle of the base right here between Florio and Hebe definitely hurts indeed, Hebe decides to tap out of the game at that point realizing that uh, with the nukes taking out all the build power and all the labs over here, all these units that are effectively being countered as well, not going to be much point in pushing forward. Marauder now running forward once again, ready to finish the job that their brothers in orange started so long ago. And just like that, the blue team falls under the weight of the Red Empire, who manages to clutch out a victory in this back-and-forth game of Beyond All Reason. Death tolls through the millions. Dead commanders left, right, and center. But eventually, the red team, with just one commander remaining, manages to take the victory. What an exciting game. Certainly enjoyed that. If you did too, you can always hit the like button down below. Help get Bar and the Brightworks out there on the YouTube algorithm. I certainly appreciate and appreciate you. And I sure hope you have a great rest of your day. And I will see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason.